Hi everyone, I'm Juan Luis Cabellos, I'm a cinematographer and I'm here to talk about the new Canon C500 Mark II and the full frame Sumir Prime lenses. Over the years, a great technological development has taken place in film industry. New cameras, lenses and lighting fixtures, an unprecedented level has been reached in terms of quality of image. The main camera manufacturers have recently taken a step forward in terms of sensor size, adopting a new standard the classic full frame used in still photography. New cameras with the highest image standards, but expensive, which means that they are not accessible for all productions. Last year, Canon launched the new C500 Mark II, a new camera that meets the highest image quality standards with a quite interesting features at a reasonable price. Full frame sensor, internal 5.9K raw light 12 bits and a very handy size. The first thing I would like to emphasize is the image quality of the camera. Interesting colors, full of nuances, wide dynamic range with good response both in high and low lights and an excellent signal noise ratio. One of the coolest things about the full frame sensor is that it subtly modifies the way we visually tell stories. There is an interesting change of perspective because full frame cameras require the use of lenses with a higher focal length for viewing angles equivalent to Super 35. When working with lenses with a higher focal length, the depth of field can be reduced to really narrow edges. We can direct the viewer's attention in a more precise way to those elements or characters that are interesting. Also, this can emphasize the three-dimensional feeling because foreground and backgrounds appear more out of focus related to the subject. Another great value of this camera is the possibility of shooting in 12-bit files in internal recording. This factor places definitely the C500 Mark II on a higher level than any other camera on its range. The kind of production in which it can be considered is quite wide. Feature films and TV series with or without the FX, advertising movie or even documentary cinema where the production design is usually smaller. Working with raw light files also allows a great freedom of action since the working margins in post-production in each shot is much greater than working with a processed codec. I'm convinced that the look of a film has to be work on the set. Having the possibility of working with raw files gives me the tranquility that the final color grading will be much more precise and interesting. At an operational level, the camera couldn't be easier. It's a comfortable and simple interface that can be adapted to any shot. You can customize the function of many assignable buttons and the exposure and focus assist tools are easy and standardized. The internal neutral filters are also very useful as you can adjust the exposure without making drastic adjustments to the aperture. Usually I like to design the aperture before shooting and be true to this decision as it gives me visual coherence. It's a really small and light camera, which allows to be used in small spaces such as cars or lifts, or to be mounted on devices such as drones or gimbals. In addition, if we are working in a handheld production, we can be sure that at the end of the day, our bag will be in one piece. Lens mounts are easily interchangeable, and it offers us the possibility to work with almost any lens on the market whatever the lens coverage is. And for both EF or PL mounts, for the three sensor modes, full frame, Super 35 and Super 16. Sumir Prime lenses have been the other great discovery. They are warm and soft with a very controlled contrast. Making drama or advertising, one of the most important things is to take care of the close-ups. When people look at an image, they are looking at the real faces of the actors. Our job is to make that faces interesting for the audience, and the Sumirs make that job easy because they work very well the skin tones and textures. Nowadays, in film industry, there are a lot of options to choose from, but if you're looking for a beautiful color and skin tones, 
great dynamic range, solid ergonomics, then this is the C500 Mark II. It's the camera for your production, actually for any kind of production. And of course, the Sumir Primes, the perfect combo to create beautiful images. Hello and welcome to day two of a series of very special live Q&A sessions with a hand-picked selection of special guests and experts who will be talking in depth about their experience in the industry, all of which is of course part of Canon Vision. Now, as you know, this virtual trade show has been created in place of this year's IBC. And even though Canon would have loved to have done this in person, in the flesh, with an actual event, with actual real people, of course that's not possible. And it's not like a virtual event hasn't been done before. You know, we were doing this back in July. I am of course talking about the virtual showcase um, and the launch of the impressive EOS R5 and EOS R6. Now, let me just introduce myself. So for those of you who don't know me, my name my name's Lucy Hedges, hello. Um, I'm the technology editor for the Metro newspaper in the UK. I'm also a BBC travel show presenter and just all round gadget enthusiast. So I'm really, really happy to be here this morning talking to you guys. Um, we've got a really exciting day and session for you. So I'm really happy to be involved. Um, now, as you probably know, there's been lots of exciting new announcements. Yesterday, um, as Canon shone the spotlight on a range of inspiring new products for independent filmmakers, cinematographers, and of course, the broadcasting industry. Um, so let's have a quick recap of what those products were or are. Okay, so first up, we've got the EOS C70. Um, this is a cinema quality camera in a distinctively compact body, which just happens to be the first camera, the first cinema EOS camera to incorporate the RF mount, and it's the most compact and lightweight cinema EOS camera to date. So you're looking at a pretty sophisticated shooter that bridges the gap between mirrorless and digital cameras and is packed to the hilt with the latest technology and a serious amount, amount of innovative and intuitive features. I'm talking about 4K shooting at 120 frames per second with audio recording, might I add, built-in ND filters, touch autofocus, improved dual pixel autofocus with intelligent tracking, we've got a touch interface, um, and intuitive and customizable controls. There's so much to sink your teeth in, all of which give it the potential to become one of the best cinema cameras around. Um, Canon's vision, you know, it involves taking super 35 millimeter movie making um, in an exciting direction with a camera that wants to transform the way films and video are made and to ultimately transform the way that photographers and videographers work in order to meet the diverse and evolving recording equipment of the industry. Um, next up, there's the mount adapter, the EF EOS R 0.71 times. Um, this mount adapter gives users access to an extensive range of the Canon EF mount lenses while paving the way to expand creative capabilities for even more shooting freedom. And then finally, a product that demonstrates Canon's commitment to lens innovation. That's the CJ20 EX5B. It's a high performance broadcast lens that's been engineered to resolve an outstanding level of detail across an equally outstanding zoom range. So that's the new product that's been announced. Um, so what can you expect from today's live session? Um, well, Canon has invited a selection of guest speakers and a brilliant bunch of, you know, inspirational and all knowledgeable guests of all kinds of different backgrounds to talk about their experiences in the industry, projects and shoots they've been involved in, and of course, the Canon kit they used to do it. So this is a brilliant opportunity for you guys, the audience, to be inspired by fellow filmmakers and other people who love nothing more than to arm themselves with a camera and serious amounts of creativity. So we're going to be diving into a variety of really interesting topics today during these live sessions so it's certainly worth staying for them all. Um, it's also worth mentioning that the sessions will be available to replay later on the Canon Vision platform in case you missed one or you just want to watch it over and over again. And make sure you keep an eye out on the Canon Pro social media channels to take a look at more content shot on the Canon products um, and of course loads of other cool content as well. Um, just head to Canon EMEA Pro on Facebook and Twitter it's social media, I'm sure you know exactly what you're doing. Um, so just before kicking off with our guests, I just wanna give you a bit of an overview of what this session is all about. So joining me today, this morning, um, on this Q&A is director and DOP Juan Luis Cabello to discuss how full frame 
um, influences cinematography. Also joining us on this session is Barry Griffin, a product expert from Canon UK. You can talk to us a little bit more about the technical side of Canon's kit and what this means for filmmakers. Now, before we kick off with Juan, I just want to say, it goes without saying that we would love to hear your questions. So if you've got anything you want to ask our special guests, our DOPs, make sure you fire them over. Don't be shy. We would love to hear them. Okay, so let's kick off with our Q&A, shall we? Juan, how are you? Hi, good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and, come and share your experiences with us this morning. It's so, pleasure. So you've, you've got a quite an extensive career. You've been working in film for over 20 years. So can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, it, it's, a, it's a long way. It's a long journey. Uh, I've started um, working as a loader in 1996. Uh, so um, I, I was doing commercials and music videos and so on. Um, and after that, three years, three years later, I, I take a step above and, uh, and working as an assistant camera, AC, uh, doing documentary films. So we went uh, for three years um, working, uh, traveling around the world, doing documentaries, and that was an incredible experience. I've learned a lot, a lot of of people, of cultures, and so on. And, and I'm pretty sure that that, uh, that experience uh, influenced me in, in the way of um, how I understand the light. Mm -hmm. Of course, at that time, I was uh, the assistant camera. I, I wasn't the director of photography, but the director of photography, Javier Suarez, which is a great man and great cinematographer, involves me a lot on, on, on the job and and I have learned a lot a lot from him yeah uh, after the documentary films I went to the uh, I have a job I get a job uh, on on TV I work for uh, um, for a few months on, uh, on uh, camera as a cameraman yeah. on TV news and did it that that, that didn't uh, last long because I, I realize it's, it's an obvious thing, but I realize that I have to follow the events. And working on, on, on movies, the events follows you. And if you, you want to have control of, of, of your image, mm -hmm. uh, this is, this is the, the only way to, to, to work. So I quit the, I quit the news. And, and in 2000, 2002, I started... Uh, um, uh, sorry, in 2003, mm -hmm. I, I started to work in, in, a, in on a school. I received an offer from, um, from my alma mater, um, CEV, uh, to help them uh, with the practical classes. Yeah. I mean, I, I made a decision, I, uh, which is the best option, uh, uh, start teaching, mm, about what I like, or continuing uh, suffering on TV news. So <laughs> <laughs> I think happiness I, is I, very I, important. I, I took the best option, and and I accepted on one condition, uh, and that was if I have, if, if I have something to shoot, they they um, uh, can me, they, they can they let me get out and come back. At the, at the later day, yeah. So I have to say that, that agreement is still is still working. So uh, it's been nice work on on, on TV series, and uh, when I finish, come back to to, to teach. Yeah. This is another thing that I like so much. So you, and really, you really have done quite a lot, like from yeah. It's it's, it's it's a very tricky. Time. It's a very tricky uh, uh, um, journey because. I know but this is a, a idea behind that, and and the idea is uh, um, if you wanna if you wanna something, just follow it, mm -hmm. because at the end you will get it for sure. This is a, this is about determination, and uh, uh, you know because I, uh, because I'm teacher, uh, I uh, I I talk with the students, and everybody and everybody asks. Oh, 
how, what do I need to, to, to work on that? Uh, and, and I don't know. I don't know. There's, an, there's, there's, an, there's no uh, a door in some place who knocked the door and I want to go into the movies and go, come on. Yeah. I mean, any, this is the way. No, there's no uh, uh, such a thing. So uh, this is about determination. Mm. So, um, well, more recently in 2010, uh, um, a good friend of mine, uh, a work colleague, David Alonso, came up with an offer to shoot one TV series, one small TV series. And that, that was it. Uh, I was very happy because that was what I wanted. Yeah, so it finally is, came about what you were looking yeah, for. Yeah, I can, finally came about. Uh, I will be a cinematographer. So that was nice. Uh, I, I thought I reached the Premier League. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> a, a massive <laughs> but, notch in your career timeline. Yeah, um, yeah. Unfortunately, that movie, that TV series, it wasn't released. <laughs> so nobody saw it. And I had to wait till 2014. Yeah. And I came, another guy came up with another, another offer, but in, in this case, that was released. And from now, from then, uh, from this, this point, I have made one TV series per year, something yeah. on average. So you you're, know? still, you're still but, doing what you want to do, and that's the most important thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm very happy with it. Uh, the last <laughs> one I, I made for, for Amazon Originals, a TV a documentary series. Very interesting, very interesting. It's yeah, going to be released yeah. on October the, the 13th, the 13th, I think. And that was it. It's, you know, that the, the business is very, very weird sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But if you want it, you get it. Yeah. For sure. you, your, <laughs> your career sounds like it's clearly taken you in so many amazing places. So let me, let's talk about your tech timeline for a quick minute. What kit yeah. did you start out with <laughs> back in the day? Yeah. To what yeah. you're using now, because I imagine it's quite significantly different. So talk to us about that. Yeah, because you know, I'm 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 video guy. Yeah, I started the first the first works I uh, I remember um, that I made uh, as a cinematographer was with the, and I I don't know if somebody remembers, but the Canon XL one. XL1. I'm going to write I, I, I don't know if, if maybe Barry remembers. Uh, it's a, um, a digital video camera, three sensor, one third inches, uh, who was on tape. Now, when, 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 uh, when, when I have class with my, with my students and I talk about tapes, they look at me like, what what is all men talking about? What's these mythical things that you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and and I start with with this these cameras that I have to say they have they have a, a very narrow workspace. Mm. I, I I I'm not pretty sure, but I I think that that was five six uh, stops in dynamic range, mm -hmm. no more than that. Yeah. Uh, and the quality of the of the codec was pretty 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 narrow was, so that, that was very difficult to do something visible yeah you know so i learned in that field in i mean in that conditions mm. so for me every year i i i had a, a, a good news because you know the, the the cameras are getting the video cameras are getting better and better and better mm. i think it was in the, the red one was released in 2006, mm. you know, around that. And, and when, yeah. I, when I saw that new cameras, I saw that, well, that, that's better than my videotapes, you know, than my, 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 my camera, the, 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 the cameras that I used to, to work it, to work with. So I wasn't. I, I didn't start as a cinematographer with um, with film stock. So I don't have the feeling that at at, at one moment I have I have take a step back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So uh, because I think because I've learned with that, those cameras, uh, I'm very comfortable with any camera 
I just when 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 something come 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 up when something new yeah. is released, uh, I made my taste. I look for the weak points, and 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 I was trying to avoid it. You know, just just as simple as that. Yeah. Where's the the weak points? Just and 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 I was try to avoid it to try to get the best image with this camera in particular. Yeah. So how how different is videography and cinematography, especially when it comes to shooting equipment? Um, I, so are you talking about the videography as the the ancient uh, the ancient cameras? Yeah. All ones. You, the possibility of make a mistake when you work with, with when when I worked with the, the with the video cameras. Uh, I don't have possibility to make a mistake. There's there's uh, there's no space to mistakes, and now the possibility to to the possibilities to make mistakes or, or do much better things with this the, with those new cameras is uh, astonishing. Yeah, yeah. For me, you know that the C five hundred Mark II uh, with with I worked uh, with. It's it's just better and easier. Yeah, I, yeah it's easier to work with. Well, that was my next question for you. You've clearly had spend, been spending a lot of time with it and using it. So, can you tell us what you were doing with the camera exactly and how you got on with it? What specifically made this camera stand out for you? I made a um, uh, commercial. I made a, a couple of works with with see if I found it, uh, but I made a, a commercial in February. Uh, and we have shoot with uh, we, we shoot with the um, with the C five hundred Mark II in, in in full resolution. I mean in full frame uh, mode, five point nine K in raw light file, twelve bits internal, which is another blessing. And uh, with the smears, sumiri, sorry, <laughs> um, and. Uh, and that was fantastic. That was fantastic. I made some tests before because the the guys from from Canon Spain uh, uh, gave me the camera to to test it, and yeah. uh, um, I made the, the 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 commercial, and the result was fantastic because I I, I have the opportunity to to shoot. A very different situations. I mean, I made I made interior night, interior day, exterior day. So okay. I, I, I can I can test in in all situations, and I love it, and I love the the the, the results. Yeah, so we're talking like an all rounder, something that can handle a multitude of shooting environments. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and, I, I, and I, Oh, sorry. Go on. I cut you off. No, no I, I think we can discuss about the 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 the, the, the these characteristics in, in in deep a little bit. I mean, the yeah. full frame look, the 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 raw light files, and the semis. But basically, the three uh, the, 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 these three options for me makes difference with with other cameras. Yeah, so it's these a are big the, difference with other with other cameras. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So these are the features on this particular camera that stand out yeah. for you that make it, you know, a cut above other cameras in your opinion. Yeah. And well, then, are there any other key features of the of the camera that stand out for you that you want to tell everyone? Yeah. Well, uh, further than that, it's it uh, easy handle easy handle camera because mm. it's small and. A lightweight. I mean, yeah. it's easy to, to to work with in in handheld uh, in handheld um, position. Yeah, yeah. Just going, going. You know, free, you know but... what I'm talking about. No? Yeah. With the camera with in, in, in handheld, mm -hmm. um, you can put it in drones. You can put it in gimbals. But the the um, when 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 I'm shooting, I like. To work with the cameras that makes makes my life easy. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, 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 
not not the tricky ones. I mean, the the how is made the camera, the buttons, the the, the functions mm. is very 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 fast. Yeah, you know the 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 tools are standardized and 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 just they are there. You you don't have to get into the, uh, some tricky menu yeah. and look for the things. You know, the <laughs> basic stuff is outside in one button. It's just very quick because. Uh, when we are shooting, uh, we don't have time for nothing mm. in general. Yeah, you, know, you need. We need to make twenty, thirty. I don't know, fifty, whatever the, the number of shots, and there's no time to test. You just, you just, you just have to do it. Yeah. No. You know, so that camera that makes my 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 life easy. Yeah, sounds... and I love that. I love <laughs> yeah, that. I can tell. I can tell. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about the benefits of being able to film in raw light with the C five hundred Mark II? Yeah, well, um, the for me, one of the most important aspects to work with is the quality of the file. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more important for me the quality of the file than the resolution. Because we are always talking about the resolution, you know, but mm -hmm. for me it's much, much, much important the, um, the quality of the file. Yeah. Uh, in, in this case, we have both worlds. We, 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 I'm very happy with, you know, we have a high resolution and, and a very good uh, codec. I mean, the raw light file, it's raw light 12 bits. And that makes different because, you know, especially when working in low budget productions. Yeah. Uh, you don't have money to paint walls or change things on the scenery, for example. Yeah. You know? So working with raw light files allows us to intervene on that shot on post production. So this is why I think it's is is uh, is very interesting. Of course, the color grading should be more precise. Yeah. There's you can you can you can find uh, more interesting nuances of color. You know. So in in a process codec, I mean, there's a range of cameras who works with in with. 4 to 2, 4 to 0, like, like DSLR, for, for example, um, in 10 bits or even 8 bits. And that's, um, you, you, you don't have options. You're running out of options. Yeah. As, 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 as smaller as the codec, you're running out the options. Yeah. So it's, it's like when I was, uh, working with with video videotape cameras, you know, I don't have an option at that time. So now is this is pretty much the same. Yeah. As bad uh, uh, as better it is the file, uh, as more options you are, um, the more options you are in in post production. Yeah, yeah. There's one thing. There's just one thing is if you are working on roller files, of course, the the files are, uh, um, takes more space, you know? Mm -hmm. So you, you have to have a powerful compu computer to, to do the copies and the backups. Yeah. And you have to spend a little bit more money on hard drives. But these days it's not so expensive, the hard drives thing. But... Uh, I think it's worthless. No, it's worthless. No, <laughs> the opposite. I think it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's worth it. You know, it's cheaper than paint walls or change sceneries. Yeah. That is expensive. And this is why I think it's, it's quite, quite interesting to shoot on, on raw light. I mean, yeah. commercials or TV series. Yeah, of course. Cool. So just about five minutes ago, you mentioned the Sumi Ray prime lenses. So can we just talk about those for a sec? Um, what did it, you, you obviously really love them? It's one of your top three things that you love about this camera. But what um, what specifically do you like about the range? The 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 Sumiri is uh, what they, I think 
for me, the the the, the, the most important uh, or um, is the the warmth yeah. and the skin tone reproduction. This is the the, 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 the thing that I like the most. The warmth and the skin tone reproduction. Yeah. Now, the movie is is ninety percent about faces. Mm. It's ninety percent about it's, it's, uh, about faces, you know. So it's very important these days the lenses that you're working with, because you know the the old cameras has a has some um, no. Yeah, all, all the cameras has a very, very high um, technology in, 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 in capturing images. You know, yeah. the sensors are, 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 are pretty much good on almost on, uh, on all the cameras. But the lenses make difference. Mm. You know, the lenses should be nice with the, 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 with the skin tones and textures. Yeah. So this is the, 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 the thing that I like the most. Obviously, there's another things that I like the, the, the Sumerians. Uh, the flares, you know, the, the flares is it's, it's a trend also. And to, to have um, lights on, on, the, on, on the shoot. Yeah. Uh, who gets into the, the, the camera and, you know, makes that lovely flares. And they are um, very elegant, mm -hmm. very well organized. And the, the bouquet, the bouquet, you know, in, in the background, yeah, yeah. the lights are on, uh, blurred, uh, are like a circle, because the, the, the Sumerian has 11 blades. So you, you don't see a, um, a geometric shape in mm -hmm. the backgrounds, in, in the lights, are, but they are blurred. It's beautiful you, you a, Yeah, you, it's a beautiful yeah. blur, beautiful circles. Very well organized, so I think that's that's the thing that I like the most. Yeah, the, yeah, oh, that's really, I love it. <laughs> so, I, Juan, as you know, this 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 session is all about how full frame is influencing cinematography. Yeah. Um, and you know, you're a huge fan of full frame, but but why? And why do you think it's influencing cinematography? Yeah, well, but, you know, uh, there's a there's a one thing. Uh, that depends on the, 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 the sensor size. The full frame sensor is bigger than the Super 35, which is the standard, you know, for many years mm -hmm. is the standard. So to get the same angle of view, you have to work with longer focal lenses. Because of that, we have a narrower depth of field and that changes mm -hmm. everything. I think that this is the main difference, you know. Uh, uh, so, um, in many many times, the most important thing for a feature film, in a feature film or a, on a TV series, is what happened to the characters between them. Yeah. So the backgrounds are irrelevant. So it's working with, with full frame cameras is very easy. To blur the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. and just focus so, on the in this way, uh, um, we can the, the audience can't be distracted for the the, the, the details in the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. no? So this is uh, where I think changes changes um, in comparison with the Super Thirty Five. Yeah, it's easier to get focus to to get. The, the control on, on the on the audience attention. Yeah, and it's just part, of, you know, in, in emphasizing the storytelling process, really yes. enhancing it, shall I say? Yeah, it, it, is, it is. It is. And what 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 do you see in full frames future? Where do you see this going? I, I think we're we're going to work with both systems. With super three five and super uh, and full frame, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, because you know at the end, all should depends on the script. Yeah. So depending on the on the story, what we, what we are not, what, what we are gonna talk about, um, we can choose 
full frame cameras or Super 35. So I think uh, we're going to have both. You know, in, in Super 35, there's a, a lot, a lot, a lot of options in lenses because it was the, the standard for almost, I don't know, a hundred years. Long time, yeah. So there's a lot, and that now there's a trend, um, there's a trend in DPs to work with uh, vintage lenses. I, I, for, I forget one thing about the Zemiris. The Zemiris has personality. Yeah. And that's very nice. I remember that because everybody's looking now, looking for the proper personality for the job. Mm. And the Sumiris has personality, has his own personality. Mm. And, and I think this, that's a, a, a very, very nice thing. So, so are you are saying it brings its personality to what you're shooting and you can almost identify something that's been shot using a Sumiris lens because, you know, they've got this identity. Yes, it's, 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 it's like I said, it's, it's depending on, on, the, on the script. You, yeah. We, we made, we give, and we background to the, to the history, where, where the thing happened, at what time of the day, how the, the actors behave, how it looks uh, to the camera. Yeah. So it, that, the, everything should be subtle. Subtle, is, is, it's okay then? It, it's a proper word? So um, let, <laughs> let me check. Subtle, yeah. Subtle, that's it's a subtle thing. Sorry, I mean, the was went a bit funny when you said that, so I didn't quite hear. Yeah, I mean, the, the camera work, the lighting work, with the, yeah. the lens work should be sub subtle to get background. And, and that this, this is the part that I love of my job, you know, yeah. get the proper background, the aesthetical proper background to the actors. So the Sumiris has its own personality mm. and that's a value. Yeah. This is a great, great value. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to bring Barry into the conversation now. Hi, Barry. Good morning, Lucy. Good How morning. Are How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very well. Really exciting couple of days. So, yes. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Okay, so I've got a question for you. I'm very conscious of the time and I want to get as sure. much out of you as possible. Um, yes, so, we're talking a lot about, you know, the Sumi Ray lenses. What does Sumi Ray mean? Well, Sumire, uh, if you want to see the history of it, where it comes from, in Japan, there is a, an orc called Sumire. And when Canon brought out this lens, it was about the beautiful bloom like a Sumire orchid. So yeah. when you have this lens opened up, as Juan was saying about the personality of it, when it's wide open, it just has this beautiful look that it gives. And that was the whole concept of designing the lens when it was actually brought out. So yes, that's where the, the background comes from. It is more artistic because when you think about some of our other lenses, they have a technical name. When we brought yeah. these lenses out, they came out with yeah. Sumire, not a EF or CNE or anything like that. So it just gives you an idea of the, the yeah, idea. Yeah, it's indicative of what it can do. And, you know, exactly. like Juan said, it's personality. It's personality, exactly. Yeah. And when you think about an orchid wide open, it's beautiful. And with these lenses, yeah. when they're wide open, they are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about full frame. Um, can you just explain the benefits of full frame in a cinema camera? Sure. So when we talk about full frame, full frame uh, has been out a while in, in the DSLR market and so on. Mm -hmm. But in a cinema camera and using these full frame lenses, so it is a kind of a collaboration, you are actually able to get a, a very creative look, uh, more depth of field, more breakaway from the foreground to the background in your shot. Mm -hmm. So when filmmakers, or documentary makers, commercial makers are looking for something a little different, a little, something a little wider, having a very fast lens, lens that allows you to have this beauty look this uh the separation that you get with the lens is one thing and then of course with full frame we're getting so much more in the image mm -hmm. and when we get to the edge of uh, especially with full frame lenses and with a full frame sensor you can get very creative looks and feels at the edge of the glass uh, uh that fills that sensor so it, it is very much down to being able to deliver these new creative looks uh, that filmmakers are wanting to delve into. 
Yeah, and just about kind of just opening up the the realms of creativity as well, wasn't it? If you want to go down that Very path, awesome. you can do that. If you want it, and there's so many options and possibilities. Most well, definitely amazing. now in an A type camera, being able to do this now, an A style camera, and with the lenses that are are available from Canon, uh, that are full frame as well in our cinema prime lenses, going full frame, it just opens up so many much uh, more creative opportunities yeah. uh, for filmmakers out there and people who are using it. So there's there's a lot of chatter out there, um, you know, is full frame worth all the hype, you know, naysayers and the, you know, people on the internet, um, what would you, would you say it does and why? <laughs> of course, well, yes, it, there is, but it's where it's needed. You, you won't need it all the time. So yeah. we're finding a lot of people are wanting to uh, get, uh, find out what they can do with full frame. Mm. So the people who are, are investing and, and buying into full frame cameras like the C500 Mark II are wanting to go to that next step to see what they can actually do with their productions, whatever that production can be. So the hype is real, but it, it's it's down to the end user, that production, whatever they're doing with it, being uh, able to allow them to go to that next stage of creativity to, to see in this scene, what can we do now that we have so much more uh, to look at with, with the sensor and with the lenses that we can use with it, we can be very creative, especially with natural lighting with, uh, as well as creative lighting. Yeah, yeah. So it almost, it's almost as if you, you need to understand why you need it, not just using it for the sake of using it because it's a buzzword. Most certainly. And uh, yeah. some examples out there are people are using it and they, it, it, they get shocked when you look at it first of all, saying, whoa, I've never seen this before. How do I work with it? So it's a great education piece as well for people moving that way and wanting to see what they can actually do with full frame so the mm. hype is true but it's down to where people want to actually use it yeah yeah Kwan, i've got a question for you um you spoke brief um earlier you know how full frame has benefited you but can you kind of give a few other examples on productions where full frame has really worked for you uh, like i said it um in productions where the main um, with the, with the where the the actors are the most important thing, you know, it's basically that the, where, where the backgrounds are not are, are not relevant, you know, that, that kind of of, of production I think uh, could be could be worth it. Use it the um, use the the full frame sensor. Yeah. Yeah. And and. Well, uh, uh, if you now work with the two mirrors, I think it's, it's it's a good option to to choose to choose uh, working full frames. Mm -hmm. But basically, uh, you you wanna uh, get the attention in in one point, not closing the shot. Because with with full frame, you can you can do it a medium shots, blurring the backgrounds easier than than super three to Five. Yeah. So, I mean, a commercial of some kind of food, where where the most important thing is the food. I yeah. Mean, the salad, no. For example, no. The, uh, so this kind this kind of job uh, could be work very 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 good. Yeah. Very yeah. So Barry, the as um Juan mentioned, you know the C five hundred Mark II. It came out a year ago. You know, yes. compared to the C seventy, which was announced yesterday. So, how does it differ, and where does it sit in the full um, Canon Cinema EOS lineup? Okay, when you're talking about where it sits at the moment, it's our, uh, on the top tier of our Cinema EOS ranges at the moment. And when you're looking at what it offers, of course, it's the full frame that it's offering straight away. It's a five point nine K. A sensor that's in there. So what that delivers, depending on the codex you're using, because you can shoot 5.9K cinema raw light. Yeah. So that allows for in post-production so much more flexibility, being able to move around the image in post-production if needed, but also in oversampling, the image quality is just that little bit extra quality in the image. Mm -hmm. And then with that as well, in other codecs uh, available, so your compressed codex like XFADC, you're oversampling from that. So even if you're shooting in full HD deliverable as you're giving a full HD package, mm. you're getting it from this wonderful 5.9K sensor. So that's where that benefit is. Uh, we're looking at other things, as I've said, the cinema raw light being in there, the modularity, I actually have a camera here. Now, if you look at the size of this camera, being a full frame camera, 
been able to strip it down, put it on a gimbal, put it on a drone, mm -hmm. simply using it handheld. It's very light and very nimble and easy to use. And because of the modularity of it as well, we can add on uh, Canon accessories. We have extension units. We have a user changeable mount to change from the EF mount to a PL mount or an EF lock mount, user changeable as well. So the flexibility, the modularity, it doesn't matter what kind of production you're, you're actually wanting to shoot on, this will be able to sit in there and do multiple jobs. That's a key thing with that. And when yeah. you're talking about the C70, which is a really exciting camera, and I do have that with me too as well, just to talk about it, we can see. So this one is small, it's a handheld camera. It's not modular, as in I can't add on any extra units to make it a bigger production camera because it's designed to be a single handheld simple unit. Yeah. This doesn't have the, the user changeable mount, but it does have the RF mount. It's Super 35 versus full frame. It does have the DGO sensor in here, which is really exciting. But the benefit is with the two of these cameras, they will work so well together. Your A camera, your B camera. Mm -hmm. So you can see that, that that kind of succinct thing going on with both of these cameras being able to work in the production and in post-production then being able to deliver the, a, a similar look. You don't have to do too much work with it. Mm -hmm. I like that. They, they complement each other well. I yes, like. very much so. That's the whole thing with the Cinema EOS range as well when talking about Canon. They do, it doesn't matter what camera you're using, if you're using multiple cameras in the, uh, on a production, post-production is a lot easier because matching in post is, is a lot easier. Yeah. So you mentioned um, you kind of touched on it very briefly. Five point nine k. You know, mm -hmm. we're in a we're in a time where not most of us have only just about got a four k TV. <laughs> um, so yep. what is the need for this higher resolution? Uh, as I was kind of going into with a higher resolution, what we're able to do is in post production or the quality of the image, we're getting a higher resolution, but we can deliver it in a lower package. So we can deliver that in 4K, but the image quality, the sharpness, the detail mm -hmm. that it's delivering is higher than 4K. So when you're playing it back and looking at it on your 4K TV, or if you're delivering in a full HD uh, package and it's going on a full HD TV, you're still getting that image from a higher resolution. So we've just got all that beautiful look, the color, all the rest coming down into whatever resolution we need. And yeah. then, of course, in post-production with Codec, we have the choice, uh, the, the, the flexibility of moving around a shot to compose the shot even in post-production, having a higher resolution when delivering yeah. 4K. So it's just it's about giving, arming people with more flexibility. That's it. You've yeah. got it. A bigger tool to work with, doesn't matter how you're delivering that. Mm, yeah, yeah. So many manufacturers are now making full frame cameras. So what now stands a camera apart from the rest of the full frame options out there? Oh, well, I, 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 <laughs> it's getting crowded. I'm going to hold it up again. Look yeah. at the size of the camera, the size and weight of this camera when we're talking full frame. When you think about large cinema cameras and production cameras, they can be two, three times the size of something like this. Yeah. We can make this bigger. This is the, the flexibility of the modularity of the camera, being able to put on extension units that allow us to have more outputs, add extra power, uh, put ex more batteries onto it is, is there as well. But yeah. we can strip it down where you have this type of camera that can be put into very tight places. So even as if you're using a larger production camera, this full frame camera, I could put this into a tight corner to take some creative scenes and have everything I need on it as well. Yeah. So that's one key thing on it. Uh, with theirs as well, the user changeable mount. So being able to just get yourself purchase a PL mount and yourself remove four screws, quickly change the mount over, opens up the world, uh, as Juan was saying about being able to use PL mounts, EF mounts, and so on. Huge array of lenses can now be used where you, do, you can change it yourself. So yeah. a lot of key things there. And internal RAW. So with this camera on CF Express cards, I don't have to add any extra devices on here to do external recording for a higher uh, bit rate codecs going up to 12 bit. It's internal. So again, keeping that size, it really gives the flexibility even for the codec for post-production. Yeah. 
think the, one of the main things and taking size is just so important it, and it just opens up so many doors to be able to do so many things and you've got a clunky unwieldy cumbersome bit of kit which I'm sure both of you can remember back in the day you know <laughs> going from something like that to something like this it just it just makes production so much more incredible you can get so much more out of it and it's really awesome. cool it's really interesting just to see that transition and how they've evolved so much to the two kind of really amazing cameras you've got down there underneath your desk what else have you got, by the way? You're just like, <laughs> oh, you don't have to see the rest of my floor here. It's a, it's a bit of a mess, but I have the two priorities down here, the two cameras just to my left uh, when needed. I know some people like to kind of get an idea of size. So. Yeah, no, I love that you I love that you've brought some show and tell. Um, so Juan, you know, you like I said, you've been in the game for a long time. I've got to ask you, what is it about Canon that you love? What is it that keeps you coming back to Canon? Well, I, I love the way they they understand uh, how uh, how um, um, a video camera should be, mm. because it's so easy to work with. I'm, I, I, I have a discovering uh, a, a huge discovering for me uh, many years ago when I discovered the C three hundred Mark II. The first time I saw that, that camera uh, taking the menus, I saw two K. 4, 4, 4, 12 bits. And I say, that makes difference. This mm. guy uh, thinks that, that, that it's better have better pixels than more pixels. No, You know, the, 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 the discussion, the quality of the pixel versus the, the resolution. So that made, that made, made, a, made a, a change for me. So I love the way that they understand how should be the quality of the image in, yeah. in, in all aspects. You know, not only the, the resolution, because of course here we are in 5.9, which is gorgeous, uh, but also the quality of the pixel. So they take a, 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 they they take care about the all aspects of the quality mm -hmm. of the image, and and I think that 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 makes difference for me. And it's kind of kind of one of those brands that kind of is not, not a lemming, not a sheep. You know, they do their own thing. They get fear, take a lot of feedback, and you know, comments on board from people like yourself and, you know, people, filmmakers, cinematographers, and they use that feedback and take that and then use that information to create another camera or to bring these features in. And kind of, that kind of echoes what you just said that Canon, you know, the extra attention to detail that they bring to these cameras is something that you really admire about them. Yeah. 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 And, cool. and, and, and the way how, how made it, that they made it, it's very, very comfortable to work with, you know, as a very, but he's talking about the, the size, the way it's very easy, it's, 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 it's handled. I, yeah. I like that, all, um, all of that. Comfortability is key. <laughs> yes. Um, and on that note, indeed. guys, I am going to wrap this Q&A session. Um, Juan, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. I really, I really appreciate it. I love how much knowledge you have and you know, how experience you've had in your, in your time in the game. And of course, Barry, thank you so much for sharing your technical expertise. I know we could have probably spoken for another hour about all of this, but you know, we've only got a little window for this. Um, and of course, thank you to you guys for watching, for tuning in. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, I hope you learned a lot of maybe feeling a bit inspired after hearing Juan's story. Um, and before I go, I should probably let you know that there is a special episode of the Shutter Stories podcast featuring some of the guests that we've had uh, yesterday and some of the guests that we've had that we're gonna have on our sessions today. It's a really good listen, really fascinating. We take a deep dive into the new technology and you know, contextualized by the experiences that some of these guys have had while using the kit. I cannot tell you enough how much of a good listen it is. Um, and on that note, it's time to say goodbye. We'll see you maybe in an hour if you wanna join us for the next session. Uh, take care, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.